Hi, everyone. We're super excited to welcome you to Frank Fridays today. I am your co-host, Ellie Hayworth, the founder of Hayworth, and I'm joined here by Carlina Moeller, who is the founder of Art Frankly, and also our lovely co-host. Hey, everybody. We're super excited because we are joined today by Patton Hindle, who is the head of arts at Kickstarter. And this has been a highly anticipated conversation today. So I am very happy that we're making it happen. Um, Patton, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here. Amazing. Well, Patton, we'll kick you off. Um, we have a nice painless question to start our conversation today. And um, we're just curious to know what keeps driving you forward in the art world? I think being able to um, see tangible impact work that you've done. So in my role specifically, that could be helping an artist realize and expect that they weren't certain they could drive a community around and then truly seeing the thing come to fruition. Um, to even beyond that, a number of the artists that I've worked with have gone on to receive institutional accolades like Guggenheim fellowships, creative capital grants, things like that, that help them further unlock their practice. So. I'd say being able to see the results and like also the career trajectory of somebody that you've specifically helped has been really motivating. Um, and to add to it, I would also say that Kickstarter is sort of an exceptional place where it's pretty entrepreneurial. So if I have an idea of something that I wanna do, I can pretty much with, you know, asking around a little bit, but for the most part, I can sort of take an idea as far as I want to. So um, recently I've also been building funds on our platform and a mm. program funds that I launched about a year ago. Um, our, our major fund right now, although we have three more coming next year, um, but our major fund is with Creative Capital and School Foundation. And we raised half a million dollars and we pledged into projects across category agnostics, so across all creative categories at Kickstarter, um, into projects run by Asian, Black, Indigenous, and Latinx creators to help them unlock more crowdfunding capital. Because if the project appears successful from the beginning, people tend to jump on ship. So we've seen tremendous impact with that. Um, we've actually talked almost 20 times the amount of capital that we've put in for these creators. So Amazing. these are things I feel good about my job, I guess, in my career. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, and I think one of the exciting things about Kickstarter is that you actually have the opportunity to often talk about, you know, institutional change. And, but the beauty of this is it's also, it's crowdfunded. And so you can often sidestep some of the things that might be otherwise kind of entrenched, um, you know, kind of systemic issues. And you're actually going straight to the people and finding the supporters that are willing to, to make things happen. So I imagine that's probably a great impetus for what you do. Yeah, I think making art Possible to as many people as possible is important for us as a society at large and the platform really facilitates that. So Patton, what is one challenge that you welcome in your day-to-day -day professional life? Oh, I love being told no. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I love having an idea, as, even as I was just saying, you have these sort of entrepreneurial ideas and you kind of poke around and investigate and they can go forward with them. I love that. Mm -hmm. Uh, partnership that I receive within uh, both artists and then also the folks that I work with at mm -hmm. Kickstarter who uh, help me think and do better as a result of it. Um, I love being told no because it's always a moment for learning and also a moment of investigation of, well, I thought strategically that made sense, but now I can see with X, Y, and Z that that might not be, you know, the best path forward. Um, so yeah. That's a good daily challenge, <laughs> as long as it leads to the final yes. <laughs> so we love this upcoming question, but what far-flung arts destination do you want to visit and why? So I feel a little like treated because I've seen a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> but the one that I've been to most recently, and I've never been to is Aim in, um, in Brazil. They have um, a museum that's within it now that's a Black art museum. Um, and it's got a residency within the space for, I think, I think it's until the end of next year. And they provide specific exhibitions of like Brazilian black art. Um, and I just would be so curious to see that. And I also think what a beautiful thing to like hand over your space in the center. I know it's a massive compound, but your actual museum space in the center of it over to an or another organization for two years to realize something that they couldn't find a home for. Oh, that sounds great. I think Ellie and I will come in your suitcase. <laughs> so, yes, uh, so just let us know when that trip is happening. Okay. So our next question then, um, piggybacking on that, which living artist do you most admire? 
I have a lot of artists that I love. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say your friends, I'm totally embarrassed that I say this, um, but his name is Steve Locke. Um, he has a current show actually Alexander Gray right now. Um, and he's someone who I've been fortunate to know for the entirety of my career from even living in Boston when we both lived in Boston is how we first met. Um, and to watch, Amazing. he's definitely a mid-career artist. He's a professor at Pratt University as mm -hmm. well. Um, and we ran a, I gave him actually a show at my gallery at Yours, Mine and Ours in 2018. Um, but we also ran a crowdfunding project at Kickstarter to realize um, a slave auction block memorial in Faneuil Hall in Boston. That is a wild story that I will not regale you with all the details of, um, but it's worth a Google. Um, but he's really overcome obstacles and it's just to see someone's career finally have the respect and attention it deserves after truly, I mean, it's been a lifelong practice for him. So I admire him for sticking with it, but also for the way that his work has continued to evolve and shift through different work, but you can now see how they inform each other from his portraiture to his abstract um, homage to Albert's auction block paintings as well. They very much reference each other. Well, we'll definitely have to check out that project in Boston. Um, and this is kind of uh, maybe a similar question or one that you might, I don't know, you might find resonance with. Um, if you were to die and come back as an artist or a work of art, who or which would it be? I come back as Agnes Martin. That was so badass. <laughs> <laughs> I gave no shit, moved out to the middle of nowhere and made the work that she always wanted to make. And obviously was influenced by the land and everything, but I've been like a lifetime. I mean, I have an Agnes Martin tattoo. Like I am like a I love it. Oh, so you're a loyalist. <laughs> I have a tattoo and I know I know another artist Cameron Welch who has it as well that's the last drawing she ever made which was actually of a plant and it was just this like outlined plant that's really beautiful um but yeah I would totally come back as her her writings have been super influential in my thinking and my work to date so would love to be her or at least know her <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. Well, I feel like this constellation of different destinations and artists that you've spoken about today is pretty inspiring. So I don't know, we might, we might have to try to either reincarnate as Agnes Martin or all plan a trip to Brazil. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think maybe the traveling, the plant traveling to Brazil might be the easier. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Well, this has been really great. Um, we had a wonderful time chatting with you. I feel like the work you do is really interesting. So we could probably sit here all day. Um, but we appreciate a little, a little snippet of your life. And yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was great to talk to both of you. Thank you.